Hello everybody, my name is Felipe Tavares, I am a structural and economic geologist and currently I am the team leader of mineral potential modeling and economic geology in the Geological Survey of Brazil. Today I am going to present to you some of our recent efforts regarding mineral potential modeling and resource assessment with this talk called Mineral Potential Modeling and Resource Assessment in Brazil Perspectives for the Study of Critical Minerals. Brazil holds a territory with more than 8 million square kilometers. It's the fifth largest country in the world with a very diverse geological setting. Half of the country is covered by phanerozoic basins where you can find potash, coal, phosphate and uranium deposits, as well as the other half is covered by Precambrian shield with greenstone belts, magmatic arcs, orogenic belts, continental rifts, silicic large igneous provinces, mafic, ultramafic, magmatism, and Archean and Proterozoic sedimentary basins. All these environments hold many kinds of mineral systems responsible for mineralization of base and precious metals, special metals, and critical minerals. The geological and metallogenic diversity is also reflected in a large number of mineral provinces and active mining districts. Right now, we have about 20 mining districts active in the country and several other areas where exploration is emerging, especially in the Amazonian region, where we can find many recently found deposits and mining districts. The country holds a spectacular and thrilling environment for mineral exploration, including remarkable examples of new discoveries in the last decade, including the vanadium deposit of Maracá, already under production at this moment, and the rare earth, de earth deposit of Minasu in the center of Brazil. We also have interesting examples of porphyry copper and gold molybdenum porphyry deposits which were with proterozoic ages in the northern Brazil, in the center of Brazil. Our mineral industry produces more than 50 different raw materials, and we are global players on iron, manganese, niobium, tantalite, bauxite, graphite, and dimension stones. We are also major exporters of gold, nickel, tin, magnesite, and kaolin. The country is also a reliable and stable supplier of several critical minerals, highlighting the niobium, for which we hold more than 90% of the reserves and production in the world, as well as graphite, manganese, and tantalum. We also have small productions of wolframium, vanadium, titanium, and chromium. And we expect to produce in the next years lithium, rare earth elements, and cobalt. There is also an underexplored potential for several metals that are usually found together with minerals that we already exploit in Brazil and, and that could be exploited as byproducts or co-products if we have the right technology. We also consider critical for the country substances such as phosphate and potash that are related to the production of fertilizers as the country is a major food exporter and we are extremely dependent on the imports of these products. Uranium is also strategic for the country and is currently a state monopoly and we hold right now the only active mine in the South America. The Geological Survey of Brazil has an extensive program regarding mineral resources. We are working with several assessment projects with critical minerals, strategic minerals, as well as some selected precious and base metals. These assessment projects are related to, but not limited to, the revision of deposits and metallogenic models, the exploration geochemistry and geophysics of selected targets, in some cases, multi-scale mineral potential modeling, as we are executing with copper, gold, uranium, lithium, and graphite, and also 
some experimental efforts with undiscovered resource estimation with gold and copper, and one initiative that we are doing in partnership with the Geological Survey of Germany with unconventional resource evaluation for cobalt. We are dealing with lateritic cobalt related to nickel mines, and we are trying to establish a technology to extract this cobalt as a byproduct. So now we are going to focus on the mineral potential modeling. In order to predict the location of an undiscovered deposit, we must understand the critical controls that define the location of a given deposit. So to make that, we use the mineral systems approach. It is a concept that was brought to us by the Australians in the late 90s, in which they say that a given deposit or a group of deposits that are genetically related between each other are actually related to processes that goes far beyond the deposit itself. It is divided between six proxies of phenomena that controls the deposit distribution, starting with the energy drivers that movement the fluids, the sources of ligands and metals that are bleached by this fluid and then transported by a fluid pathway until some place where we have a trap where this deposit is hosted and then we have the outflow of the fluids when and the fluid discharge. This criteria, all of these criteria actually can be mapped. The energy drivers, the ligands, the sources of metals, the transports, the traps and the outflow, all of them uh, have characteristics that can be mapped and the intersection between these maps can show us the prediction of areas that are most likely to host some undiscovered deposit. Later in the 21st century, McQuaig and Hanowski simplified the model and said that the orogenesis is related to the intersection between fertility factors, a favorable lithospheric architecture and a favorable geodynamic environment together with the preservation. The models can be either knowledge-driven or data-driven. Knowledge-driven models are those in which we use our own conceptual knowledge about a deposit class or a mineral system to order and weight the evidence maps under a proper way. Here in the left, we have an example of a knowledge-driven workflow for an intrusion-related gold uh, mineral system that was made using fuzzy logic. You can see here the evidence maps organized, organized in the proxies related to the mineral system and then summarized by the fuzzy gamma operator in order to produce the final map. In this model, we use the known deposits as validation points. If the known deposits fit the areas of high prospectivity, like in this model, it's good and our model is correct. Otherwise, we have to revise our conceptual model. On the other hand, data-driven models are those in which we use the, 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 the known deposits as training points to calculate the signature of the mineral system over the, the evidence maps and our, our total database. Data-driven models are very good in areas where we have uh, lots of information and training points, known deposits, and they point out areas uh, on the map that has similar characteristics of those areas in which they calculate the signature. Now I'm going to present to you two quick examples of mineral potential modeling that we have executed in the last few years. 
The first one is in the Aero Quadrangle in the southeastern Brazil. This area is explored since the mid uh, 18th century and is still a very important mineral province in Brazil regarding gold and iron. This area has lots of orogenic gold deposits related to a Archean greenstone belt known as Rio das Velhas greenstone belt. As you know, orogenic gold deposits are mostly related to metamorphic fluids and the migration of these fluids are controlled by the major structures, major trusts, and some, some units, especially the banded iron formations and the graphite schists, are especially good hosts for the deposits. So here we have the final evidence maps for source migration trap and deposition of this mineral system that have been produced uh, using fuzzy logic and here you can see the final prospectivity maps that have been produced using two different techniques of knowledge driven mod and modeling. On the left we have the movie class overlay map and on the right we have the fuzzy gamma map. You see that both of them are very similar and indicate the same high prospectivity areas. As knowledge driven models, you can see that the validation is related to the distribution of the non deposits over the high prospectivity areas. We can compare the effectiveness of both models using this kind of validation. The lower curve here represents the cumulative number of deposits and the upper curve shows us the surveyed area. If you see here, about 90% of the deposits are surveyed in 30% of the area in the multi-class overlay model, while in the fuzzy logic the same amount is slightly lower which means that the multi-class overlay is more efficient in mapping the prospectivity than the fuzzy logic in this example. So with that information, we have selected as a final map for the region the multi-class overlay, as you can see here. Right now, in order to finish this project and to enhance our capacity of mineral potential modeling, we are doing some tests with the random forest map, which is based on machine learning techniques and is a, a data-driven model. Another interesting assessment tool that we have applied to the Iron Quadrangle was the estimation of undiscovered gold resources based on the zip law. This technique says that the gold distribution in a given region is predictable if you know the largest deposit which is probably the case here in the Iron Quadrangle, where we know the Morro Velho deposit, one of the largest orogenic gold deposits in the world. So this distribution is made and the gaps of the known deposits are filled with the unknown deposits and then we estimate the missing endowment, in this case at about 749 tons of gold, which with two deposits larger than 40 tons and 28 deposits larger than 80 tons, meaning 65% of maturity in an area that is exploited since the middle of the 18th century, which is remarkable. The second case study that I will show you is in the Carajás Mineral Province. This region is the largest polymetallic province of Brazil, where we can find world-class deposits of gold, iron, manganese, nickel, copper, tin, and PGE, as well as aluminum deposits. I will show you the mineral potential model of the northern copper belt, this area here, where you can find three different mineral systems for copper. The oldest one is the volcanic massive sulfide 
class of deposits that are related to an exhaustive mineral system that are post dated by the IOCG mineralization related to two to two pulses in 2.70 and 2.55 million years billion years and then we have a late stage of granite related deposits around 1.88 as you can see here the volcanic massive sulfides are related to strata bound copper inside of banded iron formations the IOCG deposits is most related to calcoporites and magnetite breccias and the granite related deposits are related to calcoporite veins that cross cut the regional structures the most challenging in this area actually is the coupling the mineral systems we have several evidence maps that can be either related to one mineral system or to the other or been, can be hybrid evidence maps for one or more two or more mineral systems as you can see is this composite map here the radiometric anomalies in this area are quite linear and discordant from the structures from the ductile structures which are in black while the magnetic anomalies are like uh, curvilinear and accompanying the ductile structures so this is an evidence that the radiometric anomalies are related to the latest mineral system while the magnetic anomalies are related to the oldest so we have built three different prospectivity modeling for this region and three different favorability maps for the VMS deposits we have less data so the map is more simple while to the IOCG deposits we have a very rich map with lots of details and favorable areas still to be explored to the west area where we have lots of rainforest and the access is very difficult so we are pointing that in this area we still have lots of potential as well as to the granite related deposits we see a uh, very wide and broad distribution of areas that still have to be exploited and the summarizing of the three maps and the weighting of the three maps concerning the importance of each mineral system to the ore forming in this region we have the final map here that have been produced for copper and gold in the Carajás mineral province we are trying to enhance our evidence maps and mineral potential modeling with machine learning techniques. Here I have an example of innovation that we have produced <coughs> with random forest regression to produce uranium anomaly maps that are totally independent from the geological maps that we have and that show us areas where the uranium is anomalously, anomalously high or anomalously low in the area and there is a strong correlation with the gold and copper deposits and now i will present you my closing remarks first brazil is a reliable partner regarding the supply of several critical minerals and hosts a remarkable potential for mineral exploration of many others as i showed you the mapping of prospectivity through different mineral potential modeling techniques may help decision makers in priorizing areas for mineral exploration and thus be a powerful tool to reduce exploration risk. <clears throat> the Geological Survey of Brazil is performing several assessment projects regarding critical minerals and strategic minerals, some of them involving mineral potential modeling, like the graphite and lithium. And the most challenging issue regarding mineral potential modeling in Brazil is the heterogeneity of the available database, which is dealt with creativity and innovation, including the use of machine learning techniques in several fronts. To finish this presentation, I would like to invite you to know more about our database in our website. We have the largest 
three competitive databases from the Latin America and one of the largest from the Southern Hemisphere. You can find everything in these two data uh, websites here. And if you want to know more about our initiative in mineral potential modeling, please download this report. Thanks a lot for your attention and I am here for any doubts that you have.